So we told you he was going to do it, and it has begun. This is the closest thing that we are going to be living on a military dictatorship. This will be strikingly similar to many historic dictatorships run by the military that we have lived in the past 40 years. Myanmar, Argentina with the overthrowing of Peron, definitely Brazil, Chad, Central Republic of Africa, you name it. We are going to see military. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode and thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video. I really do appreciate it. My good name is Judy. So, the elected president Donald Trump has confirmed that he's going to declare a national emergency to use military to help in mass deportation of the illegal immigrants and uh, the undocumented immigrants. So, this is what people voted for this is not only going to affect a portion of uh, the immigrants but it will affect the united states as a whole let me show you this then we come back for discussion we have breaking news and yes this is actual breaking news confirmed by abc trump has confirmed that he will declare a national emergency on day one why would he do this to free up military assets. That's right, deploying the United States military on US soil for his mass deportation plan. He confirmed it himself today. This should terrify every single American. This is essentially martial law being declared. Now, his border czar is on his way to Mar-a-Lago to put the finishing touches on this plan, which could include, according to Holman himself, the deportation of entire families that include American citizens. It is estimated that there are 11 million undocumented immigrants in this country. Deploying the US military to round up 11 million individuals or more if we're planning on deporting families with American citizens as well, is not going to take one day. This country will essentially be on martial law or under martial law, I should say, for some time. And when would it stop? Would it just be the deportation of immigrants? Or would he further use that power to detain his political enemies as he stated in the past? This should terrify everyone. I just need to say it, we told you so. We told you so, we told you so, we told you so. Just about everything. Everything that's about to happen, we told you so. We were like, hey, it's going to be bad. If he comes back, he's back. It's already getting bad. We told you so. We spent months telling you so over and over and over again. Do I want to be the one to tell you that we told you so? No, I don't want to be the one. But I have to be the one. The way to have me not be the one to tell you that we told you so is if we had actually been able to stop it. But you didn't want to stop it. No, 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 no. We wanted to stop it. We didn't want it to happen. We told you so repeatedly. And then when we would tell you so, you'd say, where's the proof? And we'd point to, I don't know, a 900-page document with all the things that they planned on doing. We would point to the fact they were holding up signs during rallies, specifically saying what they were going to fucking do. The fact that he leaned into a microphone in front of thousands of people and said into the microphone, this is what I'm going to do. And then hundreds of cameras caught it and live streamed it to millions of people. We fucking told you so. Every time you open your phone, every time you open your phone for the next however many years and you see a new horror erupt, a new horrifying thing that is happening and you're like, how, how, we, how can we stop this? And then four hours later, it's a new thing. We've already forgotten the last thing that you just saw first thing in the morning because it's lunchtime and it's time for the new lunchtime horror drop. Just remember, we fucking told you so. So we told you he was going to do it and it has begun. This is the closest thing that we are going to be living on a military dictatorship. This will be strikingly similar to many historic dictatorships run by the military that we have lived in the past 40 years. Myanmar, Argentina with the overthrowing of Peron, definitely Brazil, Chad, Central Republic of Africa, you name it. We are gonna see military on the streets sporting camo, holding AR-15s in the middle of the streets, 
while immigrants are being deported. And I, as a Latino, I'm very uncomfortable with this. I would not consider speaking Spanish in front of any of these people on the streets, to my children or to anybody. So to Latinos who voted for Trump, you are going to live in terror for the next four years. You think you won't, but trust me, you will. You better not fucking forget your ID or your passport if you are out in the United States of America, because you are going to be treated differently. They do not view you as the same. To them, it makes no difference whether you have documentation or not. You're just another illegal immigrant in a place that you don't belong, and you're going to feel it for the next four years. This is fucking terrifying. Que tenga buen día. So with all these mass deportations, will we get like cheaper houses because now there's going to be, you know, three million, four million more houses available like that within a year? I mean, could we even build that many houses in a year? Um, I think it's probably easier to move people out than building a whole new structure. You know what I mean? It's just a, you know, a random thought. Like now, is there going to be a bigger supply, less demand? And would that benefit people trying to, you know, get into a home? Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is it going to help or hurt? When someone shows you who they are, believe them, okay? And I'm talking about Trump here because I see so many people acting so shocked that Trump came out and said in response to Tom Fitton that he would use military assets to execute these mass deportations. That he said, true, true, we are going to use the military we are going to utilize the military to do these mass deportations. People are like, wait a second. I thought we were just talking about criminals. Let's talk about it. First things first. I don't think anyone here, and I don't even want to hear it, is saying that there isn't a crime issue just in the United States in general. And yes, there are crimes committed by immigrants just as there are crimes committed by U.S. born citizens. And actually there's a higher rate committed by U.S. born citizens, but that's a whole different conversation. But that is not the argument we are making. We are making the argument that mass deportations would not only be devastating for millions, millions of people, but also devastating to our economy, our businesses our cities there's so much more to it than just crime okay and there's just so much more to it so we need to talk about it we need to talk about it and we need to understand it so let's talk about it i'm not going to say this a million more times because i know you've already heard it and i don't really know how i can say it differently but a lot of these jobs that people are claiming that immigrants are taking away from U.S. born citizens are not jobs that U.S. born citizens do, okay? They are hard labor jobs that are severely underpaid jobs that a very, 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 very small margin of U.S. citizens occupy and a huge margin of immigrants occupy, all right? Also, I'm going to say this mass deportation shines a light on how we as Americans have completely exploited and used immigrants to our advantage by having these severely underpaid jobs and not only that but these are complementary labor units okay let me use this example you have a construction site all right and let's say 85 percent of your workers are immigrants and boom mass deportation boom they're gone okay and now you have five six seven supervisors but you have hmm, no employees all right and you as a business owner are like i cannot afford this okay i cannot afford this now i have to pay now i have to hire other people pay them more and i can't offer you jobs okay so tim bill tom danny fired fired good luck all right u.s born citizens out of a job because what because we deported immigrants all right complementary labor units baby it is way bigger than we think it is not only that let's talk about the economy let's talk about the economy real quick when we're talking on a simple level economies local economies will take a hit because there will be fewer people um shopping at businesses fewer people eating out at restaurants fewer people contributing to the economy okay and when something huge like this happens it's not a trickle down it's a flood Right now, we're at about a 3%, 4% growth 
um, in our economy, which is good. That's average. (laughs) When we do a mass deportation, we are going to see and feel a huge difference, especially in our local economies. This paired with Trump's little tariffs, it will not be long before we find ourselves in a recession, okay? Hate to break it to you, but that's what would happen. Also, the resources it would take to deport over 11 million people, so much, so much money. Not only that, but he, him pulling military assets into this and a mass deportation of this size would probably mean temporary like detention areas which is a whole nother issue in itself but there you go even more resources pulled from america and i'm sorry but isn't that what you don't want to do you you want us to have more resources you want us to focus on america and our people the funny thing is not it's not even fucking funny but the funny thing is mass deportation and what you think you're doing for the american people is actually going to pull resources away from the american people chew on that do i think that trump will be able to achieve this at the level that he's saying he's going to achieve it um like eisenhower in the 1950s with the 2.1 million people um deported no I don't think that he's going to be able to. Do I think that the misinformation and the hateful rhetoric that he is spewing is harmful? Absolutely. I 100% do. I also think he is trying to build the walls of his house before he has a foundation. He is so zoned in and zoomed in on one thing that he's not seeing anything else that's going on around him. And that's why he's not a good president or politician because he has such a zoomed in scope and view of certain things and he is not looking at the bigger picture and he is not building a foundation before he tries to build his house. It is just, you know, and then it's going to crumble and then what? What do you have? The first shake and your house goes down, okay? So... I mean, he can continue this and continue saying these things and he can continue, you know, kind of digging himself a hole because I I ultimately do think when when Republicans come out and say and when people who voted for him are coming out and saying, wait a second, wait a second, this is not what you said, which it's like he's always said this, but like this is not what you said in your campaign that's when you know there's an issue so i'm kind of like go ahead and dig keep digging yourself this hole but i do think it's it's extremely harmful because people still believe him and they are not doing the research necessary to understand the drastic impacts even at a scale of you know if he manages to do the 2.1 million that would affect our economy and so many families and so many luxuries that we have as american people and people don't even realize it and i think that is extremely harmful extremely harmful not knowing that immigrants are a crucial part of the u.s economy and workforce and provide so many things that we rely on is extremely extremely harmful So I urge you, do your research, do your job as American people and understand the complexities that come with immigration and the statistics behind what is actually going on in the world. And to all my beautiful, wonderful immigrants and dreamers and people who have family members here who are undocumented, I see you. I stand with you. I love you. You deserve to be here. You deserve a chance. Do not let this get you down. Do not let this scare you. Like I said, this is going to be very hard for him to do at this large scale, but there are people fighting for you. There are people in your corner. There are people trying to spread truth for you. And I do really think that as he continues to talk, he is just going to dig himself a hole and more people are going to seek the truth. I really, really hope so at least. So Please stand with your head tall because you do belong here. I love you. We love you. And if you ever need a safe space, I'm here. Mass deportation of Mexican immigrants. And so Americans. 
He is going to put military on the streets of the United States of America. He is going to deport Mexican and American citizens in deportation. Basically, declaring martial law. Where nobody can do shit. And, and what this lady said is true. How long would that be? How long? Is a, I mean, there's a lot of undocumented people in this country. And shipping them back down to Mexico doesn't mean they're actually going to stay there. They're going to try their best to get back aboard the border and try to get back in. So this is what we got to look forward to. We got martial law. Uh, we got mass deportation. And the mass deportation. All the criminals. It doesn't matter if they're fucking criminals or not. They're going to be deported. And basically, he is saying that martial law will be law. So, yes, this should scare the shit out of American citizens of all types. Because if he, de if he declared martial law without declaring martial law, what else does he have in store for all of us? I mean, the man is fucking crazy. And you elected him president. Project 2025 will kick in as well. Abortion bans will be everywhere. Mass deportation with the military's help. So basically, he declared martial law before martial law became a thing. And it should scare American citizens. Because it won't stop there. Oh no. Mexicans, immigrants, throw them down to Mexico. Oh no, let's go with, let's, let's go with some Asians. Send them back to China and, and, and Tokyo and all that bullshit. Deport Haitians. Send them back to Haiti. Fuck them. American get, get all crazy with them. They can probably whoop their ass or kill them. You should be fucking scared of this shit. You should be fucking frightened of what is coming. And all you fucking assholes who decide to vote for this man. This evil fucking orange Cheeto bastard man. Are getting every fucking thing that you wanted. And then some that you didn't. Mass deportation of American citizens who are married to immigrants. They're getting kicked out too. They yeah, fucking throw it all out. And this is what you wanted for the presidency. This is what you wanted for the president to be a dictator on day one. But it won't stop there. You'll be day two. It won't stop there. You'll be day three. Before you know it, you'll be three years in martial fucking law. Curfews. And, well, you're going to be out certain times and whooping people's asses for no fucking reason. Cops shooting people. Got full immunity. Put one in your forehead and think, oh, well, he moved. He took a seatbelt off. And this is what you wanted for the presidency. This is what you fucking voted for. This is bullshit. So yes, all Americans, black and white, skinny or tall or skinny, tall or short, fat, skinny, whatever, 
you should all be fucking scared to death. Because this man is basically clearing martial law. <laughs> this is what you voted for. This is what you wanted. This is make America great again. And all that type of shit. This is what you fucking voted for. So 2025 will be a bitch. 2026 will be a bitch. 27 be a bitch. And if I know this man like I fucking do know him. Come the election of 2028. There won't be no fucking election. None. He's in there. He will stay there. He will. Someone try to fight against him. He get out murdered. Presidential immunity. Half the goddamn country will be in the fucking toilet. And he will still be fucking running. So, yes, you should be scared. You should be scared for out your goddamn mind. Trumpers, too. You don't want to want this motherfucker one. It, well, he's going to make America great again. How? No, he is going to make America martial law again. He is going to make America marching soldiers on a goddamn street again. He is going to have cops shooting random motherfuckers for no goddamn reason at all, and they're totally fucking immune to it again. He don't give a shit about the American people. Not a goddamn one. He wanted to stay in our prison. Congratulations, you fucking did it. Now he's going to be really, really fucking peeled. He's going to be a real dictator. He's going to be Kim Jong in the West. Donald Trump. And you voted for him. You voted for all this bullshit. And you will be the first ones to complain. Boo hoo, fuck you. You wanted this shit. You fucking wanted it. And now you're going to fucking get it. Soldiers marching down the street. Cops shooting people, beating them down with no problem. Tariffs over here, tariffs over there. This is what you voted for. Do you want to make America great again? Wow. Okay. Well, it's not going to be no fucking great America. That's for damn sure. It'll be fucked up America. Piss poor America. Evil America. It'd be all those damn things again, but not great. No, not at all. And this is only the fucking beginning. We got four, four years of this shit all because of you. Thank you so goddamn much for putting a dictator in the fucking office of the United States of America. Thank you for putting a fucking felon in the Oval Office. Thank you for putting a rapist ass in the fucking White House. Thank you. Thank you so goddamn much. And every fucking thing that he does after he takes his hand off that fucking Bible, we try to fucking tell you. We try to fucking warn you. But no, you want to make America great again. You get what you get. So according to most of the videos that I've been watching, people are saying that the immigrants in the United States have contributed to a bigger percentage of the United States growth. So in case they get deported back to their countries, of which some of them doesn't even have uh, the documents showing 
prove that they are the residents of the countries they want to get deported to because most of them have stayed in the United States for quite a long period of time and again there will be a lot of money spent on that because who is going to pay those uh, military who are going to aid in the deportation of the illegal immigrants it's the citizens not the Donald Trump it's the citizens who are going to pay high amount of uh, tax to help in payment of the military so it's going to affect the United States as a whole and also people are saying that the skilled personnel whom they trained in their own country what if they get deported how will America be who will be those people working on the farms it's not easy so guys <sighs> Choices have consequences. If this is what most of the people voted for, it's time. It's time people start facing the consequences. Because I think this must... Before I was thinking that this must deportation thing is a joke. But right now it's coming to a reality. Hey, how will people survive after mass deportation? How will those companies that uh, most of the mig migrants work on, how will they run those companies? Because... Uh, to be honest, most of the uh, hard labor were being performed by the immigrants. So, if they get deported to their countries, <laughs> have around and find out season is here right now. The Latinos who voted for Trump, it's time. Not only Latinos, the Muslim Americans, the Shan Americans who voted like all those people who are immigrants who voted for Trump it's time to face the consequences because I think this man is not going to joke with any immigrant and if those are militaries will be on the streets how will the streets of America be it, it's like he's going to declare a war hmm. let me stop there so let me know your thoughts in the comment section and thank you so much for tuning in until next time it's a goodbye for now